Hi everyone, very good evening guys and welcome to this short YouTube session. I'm Dr. Preeti Sharma but before I begin with this particular class or a short session that I can say, I just wanted to give you all an update that there is a new plus batch that is starting from tomorrow, that's Monday. So this is a batch which is going to go on for four days as you can see the dates in front of you, March 28th to 31st, a four day batch which is going to be every day from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Who are the students who can benefit from this are going to be the ones who are exam going because this is primarily a PYQ batch. All the PYQs which are important for pathology would be discussed under them and this will be a primarily MCQ based batch where we'll practice an MCQ on the poll with a timer and then we'll go on to the discussion. So I'm planning approximately 30 questions per class which comes down to approximately 120 in the four day session that we have. So that's going to make sure that we cover 120, 130 most important questions that could come up in the exam and I hope keeping our fingers crossed that it works for us. This is for the plus students so in case, in case you wish to subscribe then uh, Patho Live is the code that you can use and you can subscribe on the Unacademy app. Well, having told you about this update, now let's begin with the class. What was the spotter? Today I actually gave you, you know, only two spotters because... Um I wanted to discuss about them and these are the spotters, two spotters or two things which I've picked up based on the most frequently asked telegram doubts. So these are two pictures which are first put up by students maximally on telegram. So if I do not give the history to you, what is the organ that you've decided? I've got some round gland kind of a structure over here and I've got some finger like projection here and I can see some cells out here, some empty looking goblet kind of cells. When I start seeing goblet cells I know for a fact that I'm talking about the intestine right now what do I see in this particular intestine over here in the lumen so next hint I'm seeing something a pathology which is in the lumen so usually these tiny tiny things are organisms I'm seeing a luminal organism that is also a very big hint because most commonly the kind of luminal organism that is asked to us in the exam is Giardia lamblia it tends to be a luminal organism and I see the same but uh, you'll say that the kind of pictures you've seen of Giardia lamblia in microbiology books are very different from what is seen over here. So first I'll show you that microbiology picture which I had given to you in your spotters also and uh, have a look at this. So can you all see that what if I try to draw exactly? Firstly why is this such a kind of a colorful slide because this is a pap stain that has been used on a stool sample yes so um Bursting the bubble, that pap stain can only be used on a pap smear in the cervix. No, pap is a stain which can be used on practically any sample, be it a pap smear, be it a sputum sample, be it a stool sample or any other FNAC sample. It's a stain and like any, any other stain, it can be used on multiple samples. Okay, having said that, now let's talk about the organism over here. So do you see the shape of the organism? It's a very classical pear-shaped organism. That is, when I look at the front view of it, right? So you're looking at it from the front, the AP view, and you look at it like a pear-shaped organism. So first point that we have over here, I label it as a pear-shaped organism. Then how many nuclei? So let me highlight, for example, this. I see one and two. So two nuclei we can draw. So these are like two eyes. Actually, you'll end up drawing a man face over here. So two nuclei. Look at this one. If I consider this as a pear-shaped organism, I see two nuclei. So the next finding that I have, there are two nuclei that are noted. After that, I have to find out the flagellae. So please remember, Giardia lamblia is known for having four pairs of flagellae. It has again reminding all of you, it has, you can see, you won't be able to see each and every, you will not be able to see that, but it is famous for having four pairs of flagellae. So let us draw it out again. And again, this is a very important point because there's a very similar looking organism which you must have seen uh, known as trichomonas. Trichomonas also tends to be pear shaped, but that has four plus one that has five flagellae in total this has how many one pair second pair 
third pair fourth pair this has four pair of flagellae that are seen so remember trichomonas has total five this will have total eight four into two it has four pair of flagellae so remember a pear shaped organism with four pairs of flagellae that is what defines giardia lamblay it starts looking like an angry man face and that is how they define it that giardia has an angry man face when you look at it from the front this is the ap view now i'm going to turn it sideways if i turn it sideways what is the appearance Appearance. Can you see lateral view? It has started looking like this. Lateral view, it has started looking like this, like a spoon or a sickle. So that's the second shape. When you look at it from the side, you can either get a sickle shaped appearance or you can get a spoon shaped appearance. So what are the two findings that you can have? Front view, pear shaped, side view, sickle or spoon shaped. Now these are the microbio pictures that if I would have gotten a stool sample, I would have seen these kind of trophozoids of Giardia lamblia. But here I've gotten an intestinal biopsy. This is a pathology sample. How does Giardia Giardia look like over here it looks like the side view it looks like those sickle or those comma sickle kind of organisms all these luminal so two hints number one luminal and number two it is going to have a shape which is going to be like a sickle when you see a luminal organism sickle in shape remember you're dealing with Giardia lamblia okay having said that this is one of the most frequent queries that we get on telegram and i hope it is sorted now let's move on to the second one i did not give you i gave you two pictures one was this and one was this so first i'll talk about this one the usual pink and blue that we have in pathology i did not give you the you know i didn't give you the site but there was a pattern over here that i wanted you to identify and i hope you guys have been able to identify now i'll give you the history this is actually an adrenal mass this is actually an adrenal mass and when I say adrenal mass what do I see um, now I think I know the pattern the cells are present as nests the cells are present as nests over here also the cell is present in the form of a nest so this is known as a nesting pattern and when I'm talking about an adrenal mass showing me nesting pattern the tumor that comes to my mind is a pheochromocytoma the tumor that comes to our mind is a pheochromocytoma right and this nesting pattern for pheochromocytoma has been given another name and that is referred to as the zelbelin pattern that is known as the zelbelin pattern please remember so repeating when i say nesting pattern or i say the zelbelin pattern it means the same and that is seen in what tumor of the adrenal gland pheochromocytoma what kind of a tumor is pheochromocytoma so you'll say pheochromocytoma is a neuroendocrine tumor i'm going to see neuroendocrine cells in it so let us draw those cells let me draw like let's pick up one nest this is the nest that you want to pick up let me draw it myself so when i pick up the cell over here i'll say okay first draw the neuroendocrine cell these are all the neuroendocrine tumor cells that you are drawing out here all the neuroendocrine tumor cells that you are drawing what are they known as these neuroendocrine tumor cells are referred to as the chief cells remember these are the chief cells which i am referring as the neuroendocrine cells but if there's a nest you know just imagine a bird's nest a bird's nest always has something for support a bird keeps adding those uh, tiny twigs and barks to make a support right so same way that if there is a nest over here there will be some kind of cells surrounding it which will be known as the supporting cells so yes, like every nest has those tiny, tiny twigs that the birds keep collecting for the support. Similarly, over here also, we have something known as the supporting cells. So let's mark these. And as for supporting, what is the name of them? These are known as the sustentacular cells. I'm sure you've heard of this in your theory that when you're talking about a pheochromocytoma, it has number one, the cells which fill up the nest. This is the chief cells. And then you have have the supporting cells the s for supporting s for sustentacular cells but honestly tell me if i just show you this much of the picture i'm sure you're able to see these chief cells very very well they are filling up the nest but are you able to clearly identify the supporting cells maybe not you know even a very good pathologist might not be able to pick them up very very well so maybe i would want to use the help or take the help of certain special stains and what are these brown color stains that i've used Everyone knows that in pathology, these brown color stains are known as immunohistochemistry. So first, for example, if this is the nest that I'm talking about, 
all the chief cells have come positive. So you will say, ma'am, to get the chief cells, these are all the chief cells that have come positive. What are the, you know, what are the markers that you've used? What are the different markers that you've used? So tell me, guys, for chief cells, what kind of markers should I use? They are neuroendocrine cells. If they are neuroendocrine cells, I'll use neuroendocrine markers. Do you want to help me with a list of the neuroendocrine markers? Because these markers for the neuroendocrine cells, you can copy paste anywhere in the human body. You can use the same stain when any kind of neuroendocrine cell, whether it is in the lungs, whether it is in the thyroid or whether it is in the mediastinum, in the adrenal, anywhere any neuroendocrine cell comes, the entire list is going to be the same. What's the list? There's a list of six things. Learn it once and for all. First, you have some, you know, some in, in, in kind of things. What are those in, in, in? Let's revise. There's something known as synaptophysin. And remember, you're not doing something for one time's sake. You're doing it for all the neuroendocrine cells. So might as well do it like really well. Synaptophysin. Then there's something known as chromogranin, another in that you have. So synaptophysin, chromogranin and then there's a new one known as bombicin. Everyone, are we confident with the ins? That is synaptophysin, chromogranin and bombicin. After that, we have three short forms. What are the three short forms that you have to know? Two CD markers, that is CD56, CD57 and NSE. Remember these three in, 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 and remember these three short forms, CD56, 57, and NSE. That's the profile for any neuroendocrine cell in the body. Okay, so chief cells are done. If I wanted to highlight them, I could have used any of these and they would have come brown. Now I want to highlight the other population. What's the other population of cells? Now if you look at this nest, you'll say, ma'am, only the periphery has come out to be brown. Now, when I pick up this nest, only the periphery, the supporting cells have come out to be brown. So, what were the supporting cells? If you remember, I called them the support of the nest. I called them the supporting cells. You gave it another name called the sustentacular cells. And do you know what is the marker for the sustentacular cells? They are S100 positive. So, can I say all the S's have come together? That is, supporting cells are the sustentacular cells and they are S100 positive. Positive. So see only the S100 positive cells have been highlighted. That's the entire immunohistochemical profile of a pheochromocytoma. And when they just want to give you a simple picture, they'll give you the picture of a nesting or a zellbellin pattern. And that's a very famous image that you get. So although the number of spotters that we discussed today were lesser in number, but I hope the most frequently asked queries of Giardia lamblia and pheochromocytoma immunohistochemistry is sorted well thank you so much for joining in guys see you tomorrow in another spotter session at nine o'clock and also see you tomorrow in the plus batch which is starting so for all of those who are enrolling i'll be meeting you live tomorrow at two o'clock where we start with the first set of 30 questions that we've planned for the pyq batch thank you all the best and good night